welcome to part two of the videos where I'm building the Serpent Temple, which was also entered into the contest on the Tabletop Crafters United Discord channel, and which, against all of my expectations, it actually won. <laughs> so that was very exciting. This is the second and final part that is of this video. Uh, there's only going to be two in this series, uh, and I do hope that you enjoy it and that you learn something and that the uh, techniques I use are of interest to you. And please do drop a comment below if that's the case. I would love to hear from you. So I'll stop muttering now and I'll let you enjoy the rest of the video and I'll see you at the end. That set up very nicely overnight. So this morning I've come in and I've put this final section of wall in place. So now that side has all the walls that I think I'm going to put in. I can't think of any others I want to do. It's going to be interesting. There's some fascinating little nooks and crannies which if this is being played on will make it quite interesting. Uh, but also it's easy to access every part of the board as you can see. Nothing is going to be too cramped which was very important to me because I've done this before and ended up with nearly unplayable stuff because I didn't think about the dimensions. What I'm now going to do is do the filler around all the areas which don't yet have it. So I will get that done and I will be show you what it looks like when it is completed and I'm about to start decorating and texturing. I've been doing my thing of grabbing a couple of minutes here and there during the day to work on this um, and I just thought I'd stop and bring you into this decision point and this decision process which is going to slow me down for a little bit. So as you can see I'm working and I've put the surrounding around the edge and I've just got to doing the, um, the corridor which is going to come up to a blank wall at the end there because the other side is the holiest place. Uh, what I was going to do was maybe have a door here or maybe have a viewpoint but no door. But I'm looking at it and I've got the strongest feeling that I should have, and I have thought about this a little bit in the past, but I should have stairs going down here to the lower level, which is, as I say, this will sit on top of a hill and you, I will be able to have a lower level, which would then mean that I could potentially have a uh, access coming through into the Holies of Holies by going down. And I'm gonna have to do that now, if I'm going to do it, because once this is glued in, like so, I'm not going to be able to get a jigsaw in there at all to do the cutting and obviously then I'll be not able to do this idea. So as much as I'm cracking on and I'm making good progress, I'm going to pause there for a little while, have a think and work out how I may be able to do this and if I want to do it and then I'll have to get the jigsaw out and cut it so that I can, uh, can, can at least have a hole because what I'm probably going to do is try to hinge it so that it can clip up and it can be hidden because this is a secret access to the um, to, to the, uh, the holy place and people, um, non-priests, wouldn't be able to access it. So anyway, yeah, I am still designing this as I'm building it, which probably is the wrong way to go about doing things, but hey, that's how I am. I've had a think and I've had a chat with Andrew and a few other people and they've persuaded me that I'm being silly. I just... I'm overcomplicating it, which is something that does happen, and you need to be able to identify that. So I'm going to glue these in place, and the access to the Holy of Holies will be done a different way, which I will explain to you in another video. So there we are. After that brief digression, thinking about having some crazy steps down, I've realised what I'm going to be doing is having some kind of idol on that blank wall, and that corridor will be where the common folk in, can come to worship. So this here is a giant snake from Reaper Bones, sort of from Dark Heaven Legends, sorry, from Reaper. It's a metal one I ordered off of eBay from a company. And it is the wrong way round for what I want to do. It's an awesome sculpt, but as you can see, it's designed to be sat flat with the mouth pointing at you. And it is going to be mounted on that back wall like that. And so I'm going to need to rotate the head. So what I'm going to do is cut it off, turn it around, and stick it back on again. So I'm going to do that now, and um, get some green stuff, and get that packed and looking nice. So I'm going to use my razor saw. It always makes me nervous doing this kind of thing, especially for a model that wasn't cheap. Anyway, you only live once. There we are, 
stuff. Right, let's see what we can make of that. So, cutting and gluing of the snake has worked out very, very well. I didn't actually have to do very much sanding at all. I cut it at the correct angle here, and it's actually worked out well. So I'll just move that closer into the camera. There we are. So hopefully that'll focus. There we are. You can see, and that looks really well. So I'm very pleased with that. So I'm going to go now and do the uh, priming of that, undercoat that in a second. The other thing that I've done is for the first time, just next to me here, and I'll point the camera down in a second, I've put the two ends together, the two ground floors together. So let me show you that. There we are, this is the uh, ultimate end goal. So you see, matched up pretty well. There is actually an issue here, but it's not so bad, and it will certainly be good enough for the purposes of what I'm doing. Um, and it'll be good fun to play on, I'm quite pleased with it. So you've got the entrance here, this is where the snake pit will go when it arrives. You've got the long corridor going up to this wall and on this side, on the exit this side here, we'll have that snake stuck. We've got two corridors on either side going around to where the stairs will be and then a couple of other rooms uh, here which can have storerooms or monks and whatever. Um, living quarters and then the far end the open end is the holiest of holies which is going to be a lot of fun to do so I have a few things that I need to get on with I need to work out these stairs that's probably the first thing I'm going to have to do on this and then once I've got the stairs done then I'm going to paint the whole lot with an undercoat of PVA and paint mix so that's that the other thing that I've done is I have made the or cut the wood for the next level which sits on quite nicely, as you can see. There we are. And that, well, that's upside down. I don't want that one on the top, but anyway, but yeah, they're, they're, it's, it's totally uh, symmetrical. So yeah, so that will then have walls on and have the stairs will come up um, and we'll have an, another uh, in, interesting kind of layout on the, on the top. I'm debating having it not quite such a high wall, so maybe not doing the 10 centimeters, maybe making it a bit more normal, because then I can have narrower corridors as well and make smaller rooms. But we'll see, That'll be, that will come out in the wash as I work on it. So anyway, yeah, lots to do, lots of progress. Let's see how much I can get done today. Stairs, I've designed some. So it's quite simple. I took a measurement, I worked out the rise I've got and drew on a bit of paper and worked out that it's actually far simpler than I thought it was going to be. So what we've got here is it's going to be a 10 centimeter by 10 centimeter square and it will look when it's glued together, because I've not glued it yet, because I wanted to show you, like that. So each step is two centimeters deep and goes up about one and a half centimeters or so. So we need seven to go up 10 centimeters. You see, that's maths. So you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And what I'll do as well is probably put a little pillow in under here to support it, but I won't need to, but I will anyway, I think, just to make it look a bit better, a little more natural. So yeah, that's gonna look really well. So I will be able to now work it, now I've done that, I'll be able to cut out a 10 centimeter square, which is what I'm gonna do. And that will then be how the next floor will be reachable from this floor. And I'll do a mirror image in the room on the other side there. So there we are. I, I'm pleased with that. I'll get that glued in, do the other one. And then I'm pretty much ready to put paint on. Right, let's get to painting. I have mixed up some Afrikansky and PVA roughly 50-50, maybe a little more paint than glue. And I'm gonna paint that all over everything. So it's gonna take a while, I'm gonna do it in a couple of coats. I'm not gonna get it all done on camera, but I thought I'd at least get, get it started. The idea here is to cover over the, the whole model in the same color, just to add, act as a base coat. Now, because this is a sandy country, that's why I've chosen Afrikansky as opposed to doing it in a darker colour. Um, and once this is done, I will be applying a coat of some, I can't remember the name of it, when I get to it I'll tell you, but basically some grout and PVA mix to toughen up and give it some, some texture. So I'll get on with that and um, run the camera for a bit. And when I've stopped, I'll stop the camera. But yeah, that's what I'm doing now, painting all of this.
there was some good progress yesterday uh, as you can see what we've got is on the first floor has now been cut with the holes for the stairs and the uh, that's ready for me to make some progress on today in terms of planning out the walls and sticking on some walls if i lift these off what you can see is that the paint has been applied i put two coats across the whole thing and that is now a good color for a base which i can then apply my grout over the top of to uh, to secure it what i also have done i'll bring this in close is i've primed the first snake sculpt which will end up going on the wall here in the holy place so i'm thinking that i might dry brush that in a green and then paint the tongue and the teeth and have it done as that because it is a statue it's not supposed to look all that realistic so yeah there's some good progress it took quite a long time to paint not a huge amount of time but enough time i did two coats and yeah i'm pretty pleased with that color uh, and i think that's going to work well as a base so plans for today i'm going to be putting a one centimeter high lip all the way around the edge of the outside uh, so i'm going to be doing that in cardboard i think uh, and then painting it with the same color and gluing it on and that will be covered will allow the gap to be covered over between this level and that and also act as kind of uh, prevention for it being knocked and falling off and make it just a little bit more secure i was considering doing my idea with the um by put, putting uh, cocktail sticks into tubes but i've decided against that because this is quite a big project and um and i, I want to i want to have it maybe just a little more lateral um, and not have to fanny around quite as much as you do for that that works very well for small for small items so there we are so we'll see where we get to by the end of the day i'll invite you along as and when there's something interesting to show you but otherwise just going to crack on and keep pushing forwards to try and complete this it's looking great i'm really pleased with how it looks so far i've made the little rim or uh, out of cardboard like cut an inch deep uh, lined with some masking tape to cover over the corrugations and i've glued it on and clamped it as you know i would with PVA glue and that has now been set for about an hour, hour and a half. So I'm gonna go take these off and check that it's gonna work. And if that's worked out as well as I think it has, I will do the same technique on the other side and then start to paint and move on. So I just thought I'd show that stage. It's looking nice. It's gonna be a really nice feature of the whole build having that. There you are, the ridge or the lip has been glued in place and painted and it looks really nice. And you can see that the second story or the first floor, whatever, fits in there perfectly well and matches up very nicely with access down there for the stairs and then the courtyard is open there with some balcony area over the top of it around the edge of it i've also painted up the snake which is looking really cool i'll get that glued on and we'll, we'll there's a few things that are coming up now so the next steps are to put walls around this and i'm just debating at the moment about the height of the walls whether i'll do them exactly the same or whether i'll them slightly lower i'm not totally sure at the moment uh, the other thing is going to be to stick the plaster um, of paris snakes that i've made and put them in wherever they're going to go so there's going to be one on the entrance which is right over here and there'll be some more scattered around inside as well so i've got a ton of them i'm also thinking actually about putting some order around the edges so i'm going to keep making i've got quite loads i'm going to need to make loads more uh, but yeah so i'll be sticking those on sticking on um, the that, that, that snake that I've just shown you, thinking about doing the walls, has loads to do on this build. It's going to be a real push to get this done by the end of the month. But I'm really enjoying it. It's been really good fun. Uh, I've learned loads, lots of new techniques. And yeah, I hope you're enjoying watching. I'm at the end of the evening and it's been a very productive evening indeed. As you can see, the outside of this temple now has the snakes glued around the edge. These are going to be continued all the way around but I've, I've done that for now. I'll do some more tomorrow. I need to keep casting. Above the doorway, I have the little snake and the two on the side, which was always my plan. And if I just quickly and very cleverly zoom in along that central corridor, there we are. The snake is in place and it looks absolutely superb. So I'm very, very pleased with that. Now, if I pan round and to the right, on this desk, on the bench here, 
you can see the second story is taking shape and the final bit that I'm doing this evening has been glued in. So let me quickly explain to you what's happening with this. So, just duck under the camera. <laughs> so what we've got here is we have a colonnaded entrance which will eventually also have a wall down the centre here and two large areas on either side. Now if you remember I said there's going to be a male side and a female side, that's what this is. And over the back here, uh, which you can't really see but you'll be able to see in the next shot uh, or when I put it in place, we've got the um, entrance uh, and, and it goes down so you've got some balconies um, and more colonnades going into that. So yeah, I've, I've nearly done all the walls on this, I've only got the central one to do, um, and then I'm going to be moving on to the other half. But now it's nearly midnight and I need to get to bed. It's been a long night, it's been a good night, it's been a, progress, a lot of progress, but I'm ready to call it a night. Quick update on the temple build. Today I had a delivery come through with some really awesome stuff which I've ordered, like this little pool here, snake pool. Uh, this is probably my favorite thing, these gates. I'm not entirely sure where I'm gonna use them on the build. Um, and a couple of these snake fountains. I do know where they're gonna go. Also, a couple of snake men, which are gonna be painted up as statues and guarding one of the entrances. And then this, which I got so excited that I've already sprayed it, so it's, it's wet because I've done it on the spray paint. But this is the snake pit, which is just fantastic. So I'm already working on painting that up. The other thing that I've done is I've picked up some wallpaper. I had a look at this. I was, I was in the shop for a different purpose. And I reckon that will look really nice as the floor of the ground floor because it looks a little like a um, stone, maybe marble or something like that. So that's going to look great. On the other things, I have finished the, it's over there, which I'm pointing over there. I have finished the walls, the basic walls for the front first floor, and I'm about to make a start on the walls for the back front uh, first floor. So they're looking really good as well. I'll get some uh, video of that later, I'm sure. But I've run out of the 10 centimeter tall cuts that I made, so I'm gonna have to start that again and get out, get the proxon out and trim and etc. So I've got a little bit of work to do before I can start on the next step. But yeah, lots of little bits of progress today. Mainly just taking delivery of that stuff was really cool. Um, I think I'm really pleased with, with how it looks. Um, and I think they're gonna, they're gonna come out well, those, um, particularly these little uh, little fountains are going to paint up really nicely and they will look very nice at the top of the hill next to the entrance to the temple. So there we are. I will invite you along later for another update. A little more progress has been done on this. I've finished all of the walls for this side, this end. Uh, there's a little gap here because that's a little bit over but when these are shaved down perfectly then that should meet up well and yeah it's looking really good i also have done the plastering on this side so i've uh, filled the gaps which i need to do on this side i'm going to be painting this up next and also finishing the application of the snakes along the bottom walls which will go here i'm still casting and casting and casting i need to make more and more that's going to take uh, that's going to delay me a bit but that's fine uh, so yeah so today i think he's going to be try to get these top levels to the same state as the bottom level and then I can think about my next step about grouting and what have you, decorating the uh, above the doors etc etc with more snakes. So onwards. I have decided that these lizard men are going to be statues as I've said and what I've realised is I received in part of my deliveries last week these awesome looking um, plinths. Now I'm going to make use of two of these. They are designed actually to go top and bottom like that, as you can see. But I'm going to make use of two of the bases. And I'm going to cut the bottom off of the snake man and stick it on top. And then they will look very well guarding two of the entrances on the ground floor. And I think I know exactly where they're going to go. So I have my trusty razor saw and I am going to get stuck in attempting to cut and I'm going to get clippers as well and clip away at that base so that it will sit nicely on that on this plinth and it will look really good when it's on the uh, on, on the table. So I will get stuck into that and I'll show you what it looks like when it is done. I am back almost immediately. 
And what I've realized is, which I realized as I was talking actually, I'm going to use two of the tops of these pillars as plinths. And I'm, that means I don't have to cut the bases off, which is going to make it a bit easier for me to do. I just will need to use some, maybe some green stuff or something to sculpt around the edges. So I'm going to get some super glue, going to stick these on, let that to go off, do some green stuff around the edge, and then spray and then paint. So yeah, pretty, pretty happy about that. Makes it a little easier for me to do, and they'll be a lot more securely fastened. Let's talk about this holiest of holies. So this is the ground floor. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a angled down wall here to come to about um, half an inch high. That will then be half an inch high across here and then angle up about there. That's going to be the lower half of the mouth. And what I've noticed on all the snakes is that the mouth opens downwards. The top of the head is generally flat and the mouth is going down. The, 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 the mouth drops. What I'm then going to do is some kind of a stylized type of... Um, of tongue. So I was thinking about all sorts of complicated things including um, sculpting it over a wireframe and using sculptor mold and all that but I think that's actually not going to fit in with the design of the building not least as well as being just very difficult to do. So I'm going to begin the, the tongue either at the top or near the top of this wall and have it coming down, step down and have this awesome altar on a section just before where it forks and I'll do that in a kind of blocky way so it'll have a, ste a step coming out here um, and it won't be as angled or as sculpted or as smoothly carved um, as I was thinking of doing but I think that will actually look better in context of the entire build. So I'm going to have a play around with those two elements now, get the side walls on and start to do the actual um, actual tongue. There will be some um, teeth coming up from the edge as well and on the top level which is over behind me and still got a lot of work to do on it then that will have a the top of the mouth coming, the top of the head coming and then big teeth coming down to the front there so that's how that will look. So I'll crack on with that now and I will show you what it looks like when I've made a little bit more progress. Managed to get this all stuck in and clamped and with the cocktail sticks yesterday evening. Um, did some drilling in here, which I got shouted at for. <laughs> but yeah, that was very silly of me. I was very tired by the end of yesterday, which is why I didn't shoot this. But that's what the front looks like now, and that's really nice. I'll put teeth where these cocktail sticks are coming up, um, and then I will work on the tongue, which is the next bit for this build. And then I'll do the painting, which will also involve painting up the snakes. Now if I pan very slightly to the right, you'll see that there are snakes all the way along the edge of the wall, of all these walls, and these match up with the ones that are on the ground floor, which has also been completed. Uh, I've been really cracking on with this build. I've done something else as well on the second floor, which I will now move the camera around and show you. This is the second floor above the stairs. So you can see here, this is the hole which where the stairwell comes through from the section that you're just looking at from the ground floor. And you can see that the steps continue upwards. Now it's a little bit more of a challenging structural question this because on the bottom floor I could put it really lumpy and uh, really, really strong and sit it completely on the base. But this one it needs to float. So the way I've done it is with a little bit of creative cutting, I've done L shapes so that it's very airy and there's lots of, um, there's lots of uh, light and access. You can see we've got the arches and it does come up in front of the arches. However, it does rise quick enough that it doesn't actually get in the way. However, this is a sign of me designing on the fly. I probably would have done it slightly differently if I'd have planned this with pen and paper, but I didn't. And also I've put these cross pieces here as support and that will then have another floor sat on top, which I'm gonna to need to cut. And that will be at this stage, the roof. Of course, nothing to say that I couldn't continue building this to be a huge skyscraper, but I probably won't. Also, you can see that there are some windows here at the back. That is looking out into the holiest place, and I have some plans and ideas, of course I do, for what's going to fill that space. But I will show you that when I come to doing it. So there we are, quite a lot of progress this, this, uh, this last couple of days on, on, the, on the second floor. 
So an update on the temple and some progress that's been going on. I haven't been filming all of this because otherwise it would end up being hugely stupidly long because it's such a big build. But I've made a lot of progress on the snake pit as you can see, uh, if that focuses, yes it does now. So we've got most of the brickwork, most of the stonework done. I've got the detailing of the snakes inside and the little door which is here and some of the metal work to do and also the teeth which I'll do with Vallejo I've got it here, Vallejo Ivory, in case you're interested. And the way that I've done most of that so far was a spray of what ended up being quite a gloss um, spray paint. I believe it was beige. And then I've put um, Agrax Earthshade, heavy wash of Agrax Earthshade over the lot of it. And that's how it's come out. And it's actually come out a lot better than I, put, and I feared it might. The other thing that I've made progress on are the Guardian statues. So these are lizard men from um, Reaper and I've done those also with washes. So with a green wash from Vallejo and a mix of Agrax and Null Oil as well from Games Workshop. I've still got the swords to do, which I'm gonna do in a metallic, but they're looking really nice. The other snakes that I had, miniature snakes, have also been done in the same technique using washes. This one with um, the red wash, I can never remember the name of it, from Games Workshop and then the entirety of it with an Agrax Earthshade wash over the top to bring it down. And these are very early stages of this process and just done with the Agrax Earthshade. So they're coming on really nicely. The other thing is, is I've opened this. <laughs> which is humongous and will be sitting on top of the temple somewhere. I haven't worked out where yet, but I'm going to need to get that washed and painted up as well. And finally, and I'm sorry I'm turning away from the camera so much, I have all this stacked up on the bench behind me. I have made myself a tongue. So this will be jutting out from the wall and then the, the altar will go here and this will then jut out over the edge. And I will now point the camera down and show you, sat, sat on the floor at the moment, but that's how it is, show you what the actual main structure is like. So there you can see the current state of three quarters of the build. So I have put the lower drawer in and I've also glued two of the um, teeth in place. Now the tongue which I just showed you, which I will now bring over, will go roughly here. Now I'll be fastening that in place and painting that up. I think I'm gonna paint that before I fasten it in place, but that's where that's gonna go. And it's gonna be like a dirty red color. The other thing to point out, which I will flash in front of the camera, but won't really mean much, is I have actually cut out the wood for the roof so I can start on the final large construction now and finally with a quick pan up and left you can see that I am in the process of painting up the other bit of the second story or the first floor whatever you want to call it that's got the first coat of my Africa color on it you'll need another coat to go on as well but you can see that that now is really coming on as well so we're pushing forwards well on this there's still a long way to go but we're not as far off as we were before um, the last video was uh, the last time I shot a clip so a lot of progress has gone on in the background here we have a pile of temple <laughs> And I'm now about to start sticking in some of the more decorative pieces. For example, the two guardian snake men and the snake pit. So I'm gonna get that done and dusted. I'm debating at the moment whether I'm gonna do the grout treatment over the whole thing or not. But before I do that, I also am going to paint all of the statues with the same color base I've decided and then what I'll do is if I do do the grout or even if I don't do the grout I'll probably do a dry brush of a lighter color to highlight them and bring them out but that's what uh, there's four there there's another one at the back <laughs> so that's what that's the uh, that's all of it at the moment as you can see I have stuck uh, on the uh, snakes on the second floor which is what these are and the one behind also has them so that's all done so right now it's going to be a case of putting the snake pit on putting the guardian snakes and the other snake ones um, I have the tongue, but I'm not going to stick that on yet because that will be being done, well it'll go here, um, and that will be 
delayed by my decision as to whether I'm going to do the base, uh, do the floor, uh, everything in with the grout. So I will be back a little later on to show you what it looks like with all of these elements in. That was a lot of snakes. I've done the first coat and I think I've decided that I am going to do the grout because I want the contrast a little better and also I just think it's going to be nicer to have it a slightly lighter colour with maybe this nice uh, purpley sandy colour for the snakes. So what you can see here is the upper levels. Uh, what's left to do on these? I need to decide if I'm going to put snakes over every single one of these archways. I might do some of them, I might do all of them, I haven't decided yet. I need to do the windows, which I haven't yet fully decided how I'm going to do, but potentially will be uh, made out of card with snake shapes ca cut into them, but I haven't yet bottomed that out in my head. I also need to do the lip that will go around the top of each of these walls so that the roof can sit on it and not slide off. That is the same lip as I've done on the ground floor, which I'll show you in a second because I've also, I'll turn the camera around in a bit and show you that. Uh, and then I'm, if I am going to do the grout, then I need to paint the ground on. But I'm, I'm not far off. I mean, that's a lot of stuff to do. They're big builds, but they're coming on really well. So what I'll do now is I'll turn the camera around and point it at the other bench behind the camera and show you the other two sections of the temple. So here we are, here is the ground floor. And what you can see is that the courtyard has the two guardians and they are stuck in place, they are glued in place now. You can also just see that the snake pit is in there, but I'll shift the camera in a short while and show you that at the end of this video. But first of all, what you can see is all of the snakes are painted, including the snakes inside above the door doorways. Uh, and this is the lip that I was mentioning about just now. If you'd forgotten what that was, that's there so that each level can actually sit and, and stick. So that's actually probably the next thing to do on the second floor. If we rotate the camera slightly here, you can see the other one. And again, I've done the same. I've painted all of these but what I've also done is the snake tongue has got its first decoration on it it will be going here uh, and it has its um, a, a snake at the at the far end which is what I want to do this will probably have a lot more decoration in it and one thing I'm aware of is each of the rooms is quite bare at the moment so there might be some more stuff to be doing inside but all of that will happen after I've um, after I've done the uh, grout if I'm going to do it so to complete this little section, what I'll do is I will move the camera slightly and show off the snake pit and how the porch, and well the porch, <laughs> that's a, a bleed from real life, and um, how the courtyard, the entrance courtyard looks. Well there we are. There's the entrance courtyard. You can see the two guardian statues. And uh, zooming in, there is my very awesome snake pit. I'm very pleased with it. Really pleased with it indeed. Snakes look good, the teeth look good, and the little flamey things look pretty good as well. So there we are, it's really coming on now. We are coming towards the end of March, well, coming towards the end of the middle of March. So I've got to push on uh, and get this finished before the challenge isn't required. That means that I also have to do the roof with the humongous snake statue on it. But uh, yeah, I'm having ideas about that all the time as well. So I'm sure that you'll see that on a clip coming to you soon. I've been conducting a lot of experiments in the last day or so, working out exactly how I'm going to be applying this grout. And at first I had quite a lot of problems, so it wasn't working as well as I wanted it to, and uh, I thought maybe I'd just throw the whole idea away. But this morning I think I've cracked it. So let me show you the process I'll go through on this. First of all, I'm taking the grout and I'm sieving it through my finest sieve into a container, which is a bit boring, but if you can see, the grout is actually quite lumpy. Now this could be because it's old grout, it has been on the shelf for a little while and maybe it got a bit uh, damp and so it's actually kind of turned into lumps, but I'm not sure. But anyway, I would advise doing this if you find that you have lumpy grout. If your grout is very smooth, then you can skip this step. So I'm going to carry on with this, sieve this through into my container and then I will show you the next step in a second for you, for me, in a while. I am making this up in small batches. So what I will now do is I'll take my sifted um, grout and I'm going to put three heaped teasp teaspoons, like these plastic spoons, into this mixing bowl. Okay, as you see there. And then we will seal that up. Done. Now we get the next two ingredients, which is 
PVA and water. So what I will do, sorry, arm across, that was careless. What I will do is I'll put a dribble of water in, not too much, and I'll put a lot more PVA in than I did water at this stage. There we are. And then I get to stirring, which is always the fun part when you're working with grout, as it's hydrophobic and it doesn't seem to want to stir. So I have a knife. And I just stir and stir and stir and stir and stir and stir and stir until it turns into a paste. If you need a little bit more water, put a little bit more water in, and I think I do, but very, very little. You need very little water for this mix. That's one of the mistakes I made early on, was just putting too much water in. There we are, as you can see, with the correct quantity of glue and water, it actually mixes up quite easily. Now we go to the next ingredient. This is the sifted soil from my back bank, which I collected for Rosie's Hobbit Hole and worked so well. And it actually works really well for this builder also. So I'm gonna take two heap teaspoons, not three, and that's my quantity for this, and put that in, and then seal it up. Don't want to, don't want to uh, drop that. And then I'll mix that in. At this stage, the water is just going to help you to actually do the application with a paintbrush. So make it a little bit looser, which will make it a bit more easy for you to spread. And there you are. Let's go over to the model and start applying it. Now you can see my badly applied version from before, and you can see why I was getting a little bit disappointed with myself. What we're gonna do is just use a cheap builder's brush, decorator's brush, and brush it on. And it works like a dream. Looks like sandstone, doesn't it? So there we are. That is how I've worked out how to use grout with dirt and PVA to produce something which is not only going to give it the correct finish that I'm looking for, but also provide a certain level of toughness to the model as well. So it'll act as a, as a hard and harder layer than paint. So I'm going to continue this process, mixing up batches and painting it on, mixing up batches and painting it on. I don't want to do two big batches because I may have to stop and then it will go off and then it'll be waste and also it's not the most exciting of jobs and I've got other things I'm getting on with but I thought I'd show you that it's worked really well I'm very pleased and quite relieved because <laughs> I thought that my idea wasn't going to work but it just goes to show keep trying keep learning keep practicing so a little more progress to show you I've put the rim around the edge of this top half I've not done the other top half because I am currently waiting for the upper jaw, which is this, it's going to be that way around, to dry. I've glued the, as you can see, still not completely dry, glued the upper fangs on, and that will go above the lower jaw and point down. So when that's dry, I'll glue that in and start painting it and then do the surround. I probably should have done that earlier. Uh, but yeah, that's good. So yeah, progress is being made. I've also done quite a lot more of the painting on of the mix of grout and dirt. And that's looking really good on all of the pieces actually, on all the levels. So yeah, I will be back to show you what it looks like, uh, hopefully very soon, because it's uh, now entering the last 10 days of the month. So yeah, got to crack on. In an epic session yesterday evening, I got this glued on and I got all of the filler put in as well. So now what I'm going to do is paint on the purpley kind of undercoat, this, this undercoat. So I'll get that done. Um, the other thing that happened last night, if I just do my very careful pan and then zoom, a bit wibbly, is I put the surround on that level there. So that also will now be being painted. I will show what it looks like when it is done. I ordered 
another couple of uh, these molds which arrived last week uh, and there's this is one of them and this little really worm one is the other one these come with this little kind of like sad face on which is not really very uh, kind of like <laughs> sort of thing I'd expect to find in a temple um, so what I've done is I've cut those heads off because upright with the heads cut off they actually fit perfectly over the over these windows that are looking down into the holy place so what i'm going to be able to do is stick probably three across one two three which is just out of sight over here so stick three of these across like so standing on their tails and they will act as bars over the walls this i'm not sure where i'm going to put it i really like it i think it's wicked but it might end up being not inside the temple but outside the temple in another place but I'm very pleased that I picked that one up as well because it is pretty cool. So I'm going to get on with sticking these in and I'm uh, going to have to cast three more because I need three on each side. And uh, yeah, I will, um, I will show you what that looks like when I can. I can't show you at the moment because that bit is actually very, very wet with paint at the moment because I've only just put some paint on it about 15, 20 minutes ago. Just a little in progress here in honour of Rob Bennett. I thought I'd open the... Uh, open it like that. These are the beheaded uh, snakes that I made. They're actually wriggly worms. And you can see that also I've put a couple of snakes in here. Now, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to use some filler to build up the top of these, just to finish them off a bit. And then when that's dry, I will come in and I will paint it in the uh, sandy kind of, the purpley sandy, uh, the Africa. So I will, uh, I just like to show you that. I will zoom back out now as well and show so you can see that I've started doing the actual sand on either side you can see on that side and on that side so yeah this is coming on quite nicely um, I still haven't actually started the roof one that's going to have to be this week and I'm going to be under some pressure for that but hey I like pressure I keep going I'll be back later with some more updates we're entering the uh, final stages of this build um, I've just trimmed down and cut the piece of wood which is going to be take the place of the roof as you can see it fits there <clears throat> and I also did have to trim down the one that goes underneath as well so what I'm now going to do is start designing how this is actually going to look I have the humongous snake which I'll bring it a shot here to go on top um, and what I'm currently thinking I'm bumming and ironing about where it should sit but I'm currently thinking that it should probably sit on top of a stepped kind of like pyramid type thing so that's what I'm thinking of doing uh, but for the rest of it it's going to be very very simple it's going to be a wall around the outside or maybe not even a wall around the outside I might do something a little different I might uh, just do crenellations but uh, yeah hopefully this is not going to take me very much longer now we're getting to the final stages I'm not going to deny that the situation in the world is impacting me uh, a little bit emotionally and I'm struggling a little bit for motivation and to uh, snap myself out of it which is not really like me I'm normally quite good at keeping going but we shall see I'm sure lots of other people are in worse situations than I am and uh, the fact that I can afford to spend a bit of time playing around with bits of wooden polystyrene to make models for no good reason other than just because I want to I'm a far luckier person than most in the world I'm sure so onwards and upwards I hope everyone else is keeping well um, and uh, yeah I'll, I'll try to focus on the build and stay clear of that if I can. It's the final few days of this build and so I need to crack on with the roof. So what you can see is the ginormous snake and what you can see is also the two boards which are going to take the roof. So this is the steps up where the steps reach the roof. This area here goes over the top of the open mouth above the holiest place and here is the full height entrance which goes right the way down to the bottom so my idea my plan is to build this area up in a series of steps potentially even coming back over the center line um, and beginning just this side of the two steps up or the two ways where the stairs come up and build it up in a series of steps maybe two or three steps not very many quite shallow um, and then have the snake sitting on top looking forwards out over towards the uh, the hill so that that is something that is quite imposing as you climb up. I was thinking about putting it over the mouth but I think there makes more sense. 
I also have some other stuff which I will be putting in and around the place, um, hopefully, if, uh, if, if I get, get time, um, a couple more snakes and what have you to stick in. But mostly it's going to be, you're gonna come up here, you're gonna climb up the steps, and then there will be the big, the big snake looking away towards over the front door, because that's where the front door is down here. So I'm gonna do some cutting and some working out and some drawing and things, and I'll be back with another update to show you where I get to when I've uh, done a little bit more fettling. A quick in progress for the evening. What you can see is in the background I am watching the extras for The Hobbit, which is being really good fun. And I have made a good start on the platform which is going to be for the large snake, which I mentioned. So this here will eventually sit on, I'll lift it up out of the way without breaking it if I can. Yep, eventually sit on this platform here kind of there and we'll then butt up against the edge and then I've also cut uh, the an extra bit that goes onto the next board which will sit along out here on the other side. I've also decided that I'm going to do a solid wall around the, all the edge rather than doing railings and it will probably be around yay height, maybe a little lower and it will just sit around the edge like that. So I'm going to start cutting that very shortly and getting that measured up and ready to glue in. I've got this piece going across the front and also going across either side of the join, which is a bit of an issue, but that'll just make it a feature. I'll put some steps over it or something, um, make it out to be something there. It's there because this is going to warp quite badly if I don't. So anyway, I just thought I'd do a very quick in progress. Uh, and now I'm going to turn the Hobbit extras back on and carry on doing my doing my cutting. As I say, I'm probably going to work now as I wait for these all to dry with all the clamps. Uh, I'm probably going to work on the surrounding external and exterior wall, which is going to be about half the height of a model. So it literally is just going to be a low wall around the edge. The thing with a build this size is not necessarily so much the making of it, but it's all of the small processes that normally only take a minute or two on a smaller build. But on something like this, take a good 20 or 30 minutes or even up to an hour. So what I'm doing here is I'm filling in the gaps around this. And I've been at this for quite a long time and I'm just coming to the end of this section. But as you can see, it's just, there's just so much of it. <laughs> I'm not complaining, I'm just more saying that when you're doing a big build, what you'll find is it's repetitiveness that kills your productivity. You need to kind of switch your brain off or talk to the camera like I am and just get on with it. It's going to be worth it in the end because I've just actually this, uh, this morning put all the boards together for the first time to make sure everything fits. There's a very little bit of sanding needing to be done on the other roof section which I was kind of aware would be there when I was making it, so I'm going to sand that down. But other than that, everything looks great, and I might even remember to put pictures up of what I just took just now. The before I'd done this, before I started doing the uh, the filling on this section. So yeah, big builds. They're not horrible. They're not more complicated. They just take longer. That's all. I'm going to take more materials as well, obviously, that's another thing to bear in mind, particularly in these times where materials are going to be get, become harder to get for a while. So I think probably this will be my last mega build until the world is back to normal, whatever normal is. But it's a good way to go out for a mega build, isn't it? What an epic thing. Right, I'll stop muttering now. And... Uh, I'll be back when I do the next step, but I just thought I'd share those thoughts. It's not complex doing something large, it takes more time. Okay, a quick update on the progress here. I have been putting, I've been making really good progress actually today. So I've put two coats of the um, mix of, P, of PVA and grout and 
sand or gravel or whatever over both of these upper sections. This is obviously the front section. Uh, and that's pretty much then done, which is amazing to me. I, I, this is Thursday, uh, and this evening I've had a really good progress. They've dried quickly because I've got the fire lit. Uh, I've got a little tiny a few little bit more to do. I might mix up another mix later on, maybe tomorrow morning first thing, and put it over and touch up on these and on the other sections. So there are a couple of places where maybe it's not quite so great. However, that that is done. What I'm now about to do is some miniature painting and other detailing. So I have these from Hassle Free Miniatures. There's a cultist leader, a cultist A, and a cultist bearer that I bought a long time ago and have just been in the stash. I think I'm going to make them up so they can be scattered around and I also might look through some of the other things I had for a little while and uh, scatter them around. Uh, I also have these snakes, which you've seen previously, which I painted up earlier, which will be stuck on, uh, I'll need to finish the paint job on them. They're not great, so I'm going to go along and finish the paint job on them. And they possibly will end up being stuck on here or something like that, so I'm going to do that. I have this, these two, which I ordered for this build, but I haven't yet used, so I have these vultures from uh, Reaper Miniatures that I would like to paint up and add somewhere, maybe standing on one of the statues or whatever. And then, have, then I have this Vandarendra demon, which is some crazy snake woman. And it's an amazing model, absolutely wonderful. So I'm probably gonna pop that on a stash net as well and go and clean these up get them undercoated and start painting them. Uh, now, this evening I'm not going to pull the camera along there because I'm literally just going to be cleaning them up and undercoating, but I will probably bring you along for the painting sessions when I do them. So yeah, it's been a really, really good good evening. Going to go and do that. Um, I've got the huge snake to paint as well, which will go on top of the platform on the other building, uh, on the other section, and I've also got the actual altar to paint as well. So I'm going to go and do that now for a little bit. So yeah, good progress this evening. It's Finish the day off well. I woke up this morning uh, and I've realised that I did actually mean to put some more of my cast snakes around here and also along the sides. So that's a bit annoying because as you can see I've already painted all of the sand on but it's not the worst thing in the world. I'll just glue them over and then paint over the top and it'll be fine. What you can also see is that the ginormous snake is making some progress. I've put a very light red wash over the front uh, there, the breast, and all the way around. And I'm actually not going to stick this on, it's going to be just sat on so that it doesn't get damaged when it's being stored and also so I can make use of this in other purposes. Uh, there's a little bit more to be done on this, going to give it a very, very light white grey or light grey dry brush just to bring out some of the texture and I might put some more coloration on the roof, on the roof? Ha! <laughs> The roof of the mind on the head, on top of the head. So I'm going to go through and I'm going to sand down some of these plaster snakes and stick them on where I want them and I'll be back later to show you how that looks. I'm back in room 13 with my painting desk. I've brought all of my paints and everything back through because uh, that's that's what we will need to do for our the rest of our general life. It's quite nice actually, it's more than quite nice, it's much better, there's much better illumination here. Uh, last night I did quite a lot of painting, but I couldn't film or do anything because it was very late and so I wasn't able to even do any short to cameras. So what I'm going to do now is show you what I've done. And I did take some pictures on my phone of the paints that I used so I could remember. Uh, so what I will do is I will now flash them up and I'll put text to say what each of them is for. So now you've seen that, here is the demon woman snake goddess type thing, which is not focusing, there we are, which I've made a, quite a bit of progress on. I've even done a little bit more since last night, which is the green on the tail. The green on the tail was actually done with black green, black green from Vallejo, which is not 70980, that's 70980. That's the colour on the tail, and that was Angela's suggestion, you should always listen to your artist girlfriend. So this is one from Reaper Miniatures. I will just reach over and grab the box so I can show you what it is. 
So here is the box for the Vanderendra Demon, which is what that is, whatever Vanderendra Demon is. So the other three miniatures you see that I've painted up are from Hassle Free and they are their cultists. So you've got the cultist leader, the cultist bearer and cultist number two. And I've painted them up and I'm quite pleased with them. They've got a little bit more to be done. I might tone the skin down to be slightly less orange, but I'm really, really pleased with how those are coming on and when they need to be finished soon because they need to be done for the temple build also, obviously. So I'm going to base them, going to use the same technique for basing them as I've done for the entirety of the temple. So they will get the sand and grout mix on the base and that should look really well. So I'm maybe going to get some time to paint a bit more this evening, and if I do, I'll invite you along. I have some other things to paint which are here, which is some awesome, awesome Reaper vultures. So I'm going to probably put one or two of those on the temple as it stands now, and keep, I've got two sets of three, so keep the other ones for the main board, which will be happening at some point in the future. So there we are, that's a little update. Uh, what I'll now do is take you through into the games room and I will show you the actual temple because it is pretty much finished, very, very nearly finished. And I want to just talk you through it, take it apart and uh, show you all the levels so you can see um, how, how it looks. So um, you'll have that, that's coming up next. So here we have it in all its glory, uh, assembled and Everything. I'll be taking some more, much more detailed pictures, obviously, with much better lighting. This is just with the generic lighting that is in the uh, in the games room. So yeah, so this is three floors, so they all come apart. We've got the ginormous snake, which is separate. Now, I've not glued that on deliberately because I don't want to risk it getting damaged when I'm moving it around. And also, I can make use of it in other settings. But that's basically the highest place. You can see that you've got steps to get up onto it and um, it can be a, a approached but yeah so that's the idea there and uh, back here we've got steps these are the two access points that have stairways which you'll see very shortly so if i pull that snake out of the way and lift this section you can see here i can put my hand all the way in and down this goes right the way down to the entrance courtyard so you can, so it basically has access right the way through and there's a, um, a balcony there and then the balcony here to look down. Now they don't believe in health and safety so there's no railings. There may be at some point in the future but right now I haven't yet worked out how I want to do that. So if I lift this front bit off like so, this is able to be lifted off and put over here out of the way. So you can see there that the top lifts off very easily and reveals the next layer. And likewise, so does this one. So there's the first playable layer. Now, each area is separated. Each side is separated. We have stairs coming up on this side and stairs coming up on that side. Over here we have snaky kind of like bars going through and looking down into this area, which you will see very shortly. Um, it's a shame one says you need to look at this from both ends. So um, I will put some pictures off in a second. That's the holiest area. And there's colonnades on each side. So you can go through each of these and there's one doorway between the two sides. And the concept here is that this is the female side and this is the male side or vice versa. And never the twain shall meet because they're regressive religious people who don't think that the sexes should meet or whatever. But yeah, so that's the idea. It's a big open plan area, this level, but it does have lots of, in, of archways, like I say, to make it interesting. Now the sexes can get through this door, which probably would be shut, then probably put a door in there. But there is the balcony here, which is around the courtyard. So that's about the only place that they will be able to uh, mingle. But this potentially will be, will be locked off this door here. But yeah, so that's that. So what I will do now is I will lift the front section off so that I can show you the way that this is.
Well, it wasn't that exciting. That looked very, very dramatic, and it is dramatic, but I can fix it. I've just gone away and had a look. I picked it up by the wrong bit, which is something you should never do when you know that you have a weak point, which are those stairs. So as I was trying to show you, notwithstanding the fact that I've broken them, and I'll have to show you how I'm gonna fix it, we have fangs on the front there, as you can see. So that's that level. And that now reveals, when I lift this out of the way, the ground floor. Now the ground floor is the most interesting floor in terms of space to move and other things. We have at the front, we have the stake pit, which I've shown you, and we have the two guardians. Then we have a corridor going right down through the middle, which leads to the snake, which is where the commoners can worship. On the other side of that wall is the tongue, which is where the uh, high priest, which you've just seen, I've been painting up, and there is the altar. And here is where the stairs come up on either side, and we've got a couple of rooms here. So there's a lot more of an interesting shape, a lot more playability in there. And you can see that the uh, corridor comes round out of the, out of the courtyard round and to the stairs to come up. So that's the temple. I'm now gonna go and fix my breakage, and I wanna invite you along for that. I'm really, really pleased with it. I know that it's, uh, that was a bit of a dramatic moment, but n n it's not as bad as it looked, um, and I will get that repaired. I have a couple of days, so that should dry off. So yeah, oops, never mind. <laughs> I can tell you I was this close to not showing this, any of this clip, but in the, um, yeah, we all make mistakes. I make more than most. I'm back here much sooner than I expected to be after that dramatic moment then. I don't know if I swore. I certainly did in my head. I hope I didn't on the camera, uh, but it is what it is. So what we have here is the broken um, stairs. Now you can see just how narrow that section is, and that's why I had a mental note that completely went out of my mind in the excitement of filming that I should never, ever, ever pick up by there. So what I'm going to do is I have a little bit of a, a lump of polystyrene, of, of the blue foam, which is what I've made this all with, and I'm going to do quite a substantial fix. I'm not going to uh, do this in small measures. I am going to stick that across here, and that will make it very, very secure, hopefully. So we will clamp that in place and leave that to dry for the next little while. I may even go back in and do this as a retrofit on the other stairway as well, so that if ever I make that stupid mistake again, which I probably never will, but you never know, it doesn't happen. So there we are. So that's that. So that will make that very secure now and not fall off. The other part is this, which is that goes like that, if you can see what I mean. Now that's gonna be fixed in basically the same way. I'm gonna put a lump here. So I have another bit of blue foam next to me, and I will now do the same thing. So we will cut that out, we'll cut a length, the end of the evening and the gator glue has now dried on this so what I'm going to do is I've mixed up some more of my sand mix and I'm just going to put it on quite thickly and you can see that actually there was quite a lot of stuff that was mixed before because I couldn't reach it so this is good because it means I can paint over that and make it all a little more uniform. Now obviously I'm going to need to do some more of this when I put this in place, but that is now going to be good and I'll leave that to dry overnight and tomorrow 
I will fit that in place on the model and then patch up the rest of the sand paint in the right places. So there we are, so that's that. That section is now good as new-ish. <laughs> there we are. So we'll dry that, leave that to dry over here. The next thing that's going to happen is I'm going to use this same basic material, like I've said, and I'm going to put it onto each of these miniatures, which I painted last night. So I have a slightly smaller brush, and I'm carefully going to go in and dip it in and push it around. I might actually get an even smaller brush in a second. Right, I'm going to grab myself a different brush and also I'm going to fill those holes in with blue tack or something like that. So I'll be back when this is all done and show you what it looks like. This fix has gone in place correctly. So now what I'm doing is I'm going to be very carefully, very carefully, putting it back in place. So what that will involve is getting my gator glue and applying it on the wall here. Ah, there we are, that's better, that's come out now, that'll make it easier. Applying it to this end. Now this will almost certainly spill out, but I'll be able to trim that down. So it's been going to be done in two stages. First of all, I'm going to do what, I'm, what you're watching now, which will be to put that in there. And then when that is in place and glued, I will then come in down here and turn this on its upside down, put a, another little bit of polystyrene there and glue and paint that. So what I'm going to need to do here is actually put a spreader on. Now I'll be back in a second when I have fiddled with my clamp to make this work. So what you can see is I have turned this clamp backwards into a spreader. What I'm now going to do is get that in the right place and this will just mean that there is pressure which is what you need for the gate glue to work. There we are. So now I'm going to leave that and as I say, later on I'll come back and I will do something to fix the bottom of it. So yes, this is, uh, this is going to work okay, I think. I'm going to be able to recover this, thankfully. So I'm back in room 13, as I've said, and this evening you can see in the background I have the extras from uh, The Hobbit to watch. And I am going to be finishing up painting the goddess and the uh, cultists that I nearly finished the other night. I'm going to be sitting here and I'm going to get them completed because tomorrow is the deadline for all of this. It needs to be done. I'm not going to leave the camera running for two reasons. One, I'm not feeling all that great um, and uh, tired, so I'm probably just going to get this done as quick as I can. And two, I want to watch that. And if I'm watching that, I can't be filming. The other thing I'm going to be painting up are my vultures. I have six of these um, and I'm going to be painting them up as well. So I'll We'll come back onto camera at the end of the evening and show you how I've done. Um, but for now, I'm going to watch some appendices on the Hobbit extras and paint some miniatures. I almost forgot to shoot this. I was just heading out the door to go to bed. So I finished her, done some washes, painted the handles on the swords and done a few highlights on her hair. And I'm very, very pleased. And I've done the same on the cultists so I have done my washes on them and they're looking very well indeed and you will see them there'll be photographs of them very close up when I do the um, when I do the temple build video so you'll see some close-ups of them and then because I had a little bit of time and I was feeling a little bit more in progress I did this little fella which is one of my battle companies and then Almost forgot these as well. They're going to need to be um, put some washes and the beak's going to need to be done. But the that's the final going to be the final thing to get painted and done tomorrow morning first thing, so they can be stuck on 
I'm going to put two hidden away on the temple and keep four back for when I do the route. So the hill that the temple is sitting on, there'll be uh, there'll, there'll be some uh, some vultures spread around there. So yeah, it's been a been a good evening. Uh, I finished the DVDs, uh, the the DVD of extras as well while I was watching. So that was good. Uh, I'll be back with the with something else later on. I'm quite tired now, so I'm rambling. So I'll shut up. Here we are. It's done. The temple is complete. Yesterday evening, Angela helped me out with the camera and we had the light and we took a load of photographs, which I will pop uh, at the end of this video so that you can see. And I'm just blown away. I'm so pleased with how well it's turned out. It's obviously very large, but it's very easy to maneuver around because it's split in two down the middle and it's in three sections each. So there's six sections here. Some of the stuff I've learned has been brilliant. It's not gone perfectly. It's not quite well structured in terms of lining up and, and what have you, which is a bit of an annoyance. But the sand application is brilliant. It's, I'm gonna use that again, certainly for the rest of the board when I build it. The casting has gone really well. I really enjoyed learning how to use plaster casting for um, in phyllo molds, which I didn't know I could do. It was an experiment and that's working well. And now actually, as it happens, I'm doing some for Rosie's bedroom. Uh, she loves bees, so I'm casting some bees to put on the walls. So that's also helped my real life. Not that this isn't real life, of course. These are real figures and everything's real on this board. I do want to play a game. I think it'd be great fun to play on this table uh, and I'll try to get a game done and put it on the, on the channel if possible. Uh, don't know when that'll be. Uh, lots of plans, but we'll, we shall see. I've got more time now. I'm not, not working anymore, uh, what with the uh, coronavirus. Uh, but yeah, we're going to uh, try and get a game on it and we'll see how well it plays, but, but it's just perfect. It's been so much fun. I don't know whether I've won the challenge. I've not even looked. Uh, I don't expect to, but it isn't about the winning, it's about the taking part and what fun this has been to take part in. I have had such a lot of fun making this model and doesn't it look glorious? I mean, I'm blown away. I hope you've enjoyed it. Pop any comments if you want to below. Uh, I'd love to hear your thoughts um, and any suggestions what you think I might be able to do differently or improve on it. Um, but yeah, I'm just, I'm very pleased personally. So I hope that you've enjoyed it as well. So there you are, that was a fun build. I really enjoyed it and I, I used the model already for a lot of backdrops and I'm gasping to get, play a game on it. And so hopefully that'll happen very soon. It was painful to see that drop, that breakage again. Oh my goodness, how I didn't swear, I really don't know. But it does go to show that mistakes happen and don't panic if they happen, just Take a deep breath, step back, have a look at it, and you can probably fix it. And mistakes, as I've been saying a few times now, this is maybe this will become a new, a new little motto of mine, as well as you can never have too many clamps. Mistakes are the lifeblood of creativity, and if you don't make mistakes, then you just don't make anything. And don't panic about mistakes. So thank you very much for watching. I would love to hear from you, as I've just said in the previous clip, which was filmed a little while ago. I would love to hear from you. Pop some comments below. It's always wonderful to have comments and reply to everyone that I can get to. And uh, yeah, I'd love to hear your thoughts and, uh, and it would be just really nice to hear from you. Uh, if you're not yet subscribed, do please do so. And don't forget to ding the bell because then YouTube will tell you when one of these videos goes live. And last, but by no means least, I really hope that you keep safe, well and healthy out there and thank you so much for watching Beard Clipper. Mm -hmm.